Hi, I'm Ed Payne and welcome to the Travel Show. I'm on a fabulous food trail across Northern Ireland. In today's show, I'll continue my giant food trail from Port Stewart, visiting Balahi, Enniskillen, Armagh and Belfast. Native Seafood and Scran on the stunning seafront in Port Stewart is a seafood haven for tourists and locals alike. The modern take on fishmongery was set up by owners Rebecca and Stevie McCarry. Rebecca, it's so lovely to be here in Port Stewart, of course gorgeous seaside holiday town here on the Causeway Coast and Native Seafood and Scran. I'm looking at this mouth-watering menu here. Before we have a chat, right, what is Scran? Wow, so the most commonly asked question that we get down here, um, scran is like an old Irish phrase for some food or a bit of grub and kind of encapsulates all the food that we do that's not seafood. So that's why we're seafood and scran. Amazing. And I'm looking here at the menu, right? I feel like I'm down in, I'm in Boston or Maine or something. There's this wonderful feeling like I'm down in Joe's Crab House in Florida or something. It's really amazing what you've done here. It's, it's good fun down here, like we, we try and kind of portray that through the food, so it's all very casual, but we'll do like lobster roll, lobster mac and cheese, so yes, the kind of like Boston style that you're talking about, um, and then we try and make it as fresh as possible, so we'll get all of our fish from the harbour just across the road there, and then the guys in the kitchen will prep it down and put up a menu and the rest goes in the fishmongers, so... Amazing. And all your stuff you were saying to me here, like your, your yogurts and all your food that you use, vegetables, everything of course is sourced locally, isn't it? Sourced locally and totally sustainable. So we use sustainably sourced seafood and we want to kind of match that with every, every other bit of produce that we have here. And now today, I mean real treat today. So we have Stevie's going to prep us some lobster today. Get fresh from that there. Did you catch these this morning uh, now yourself? Do you know what? People ask me that all the time. Can we yeah. do just work? Like, and it's great because, I mean, it's wonderful because lobster, as you said, like, it's something that people would associate sometimes. It's like, you know, fancy restaurants or something that's very expensive and you might only get a little tiny piece totally, like a totally. tail. But it's wonderful to see here the price of it is so affordable and making it accessible to everyone. Th this is exactly it. And I mean, the irony of the thing is, if, you've, if you know anything about your history, like lo lobster was a poor person's food. So if you went to school and you had lobster sandwiches, you maybe would have got an extra carton of milk because you would have felt sorry for you or something, you know? <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to uh, a nice lunch now. So thanks a million for this and um, what a fabulous place. I really, I love it here. It's great to have you down, honestly. Native Seafood is beginning a new chapter later this year as they open their new restaurant Lear in Coleraine Marina with a continued focus on seasonality and sustainability. I arrived in the coastal town of Castle Rock to meet award-winning chocolatier Jerry Martin to take part in the Taste Causeway chocolate making experience where I would get to hand roll my own chocolate truffles using local gin, hand harvested sea salt from Mussenden and other local amazing produce. The Chocolate Manor is a fabulous experience and suitable for people of all ages and they also have a great programme for families. Well, Ed, you're suited and booted. You've got your apron on. Are you ready to make some chocolate? I am. I love the purple, by the way. Very flattering. Oh, thank you. You can't come to the Chocolate Manor and not love purple. So all of our chocolate is sustainably sourced from the Ivory Coast, Ghana and Ecuador. Great. OK. Ready to go? Yeah. So take that off the spoon. That's it. And just literally start to roll it in your hand. Don't be afraid of it. Get right down in and start rolling and rolling and rolling. Oh, wow. Perfect. First attempt, Ed. I'm really impressed. I'm going to give you one of our very fancy dipping forks. Mm. This, is, this is a little tool of the trade. Okay, pop that in. You're going to give it a little bath in the chocolate. That's it. But Ed, I have to say, for a first timer making hand rolled chocolate truffles, you've done an amazing job here today. <laughs> I had a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you see when you come down on? You're going to see Port Stewart, Port Rush right out to the Scaries. Over to the right there, Ed. Wow, isn't, and that, then, isn't that stunning? So let me get you some hot milk into there. Look at oh, that. Oh, wow. It's amazing. No ah. matter what the kind of day, you know, it's always a day for hot chocolate. And this is really, I suppose, Jerry, what you'd say, I mean, up here, I know we have this amazing um, experience. You're embracing the whole, a giant taste, really, aren't you? And the whole coast along here. Absolutely. We're so lucky to have yeah. so many amazing experiences along the the Causeway Coast and Glens and you know we've so many businesses here have embraced a giant spirit. So a little bird told me that something very special happened recently for yourselves. That's right so um, when King Charles 
first came to Northern Ireland as monarch and stepped off the plane, the gift that he was given was a tin of our chocolates, very similar to ones that you made yourself today. So, Well, if they're good enough for King Charles, Jerry, you fit know. for a king. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very happy to take them How's home How's yours well. coming along there? Super, super. So I'm going to have, have a go now. Mmm. So good. Oh, wow. Gorgeous, yeah. Just perfect for a nice evening like this. It'll keep you nice and warm yeah. with that nice north coast wind. Well, Jerry, cheers. Cheers, Great yes. to see you, and thanks for the Chocolate oh. Manor experience. It's been absolute pleasure. Pleasure to have you. Friel's Bar and Restaurant is famous for its soup kitchen, which fed people during the famine. Of course, you're famous here for food, Great drinks, great Guinness and music. And of course, the, the history is amazing here. Five generations. Yes, five generations. It was here from 1903. The building was built in 1837 by the Mercer's Company. And they put Dr. Minnie and his wife Sarah in here as a dispensary and a surgery. So they were treating people here every Saturday there from the early 1930s. And then when the famine hit in 1847, it was set up as a soup kitchen. So at night three we wandered out the back there, they used to serve the famine soup and on our research it was nettle soup that they used in these parts. So we've been uh, replenishing and, and giving out refreshments here uh, since then, are you okay? And I mean, you're, you're in a beautiful part of the world here as well, aren't you? I mean, it's a gorgeous part of Northern Ireland. Oh, it's beautiful here in South Derry and that Ulster and uh, very scenic. We're at the bottom of Ancarn Mountain here. And there's loads of places to stay as well around here, isn't there, Dermot? So the property's an old coaching in as well, you know. People used to stop here and get their horses fed and watered and maybe a bit of water themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but the Shamrock on top, beautiful point of Guinness here. And you've got the turf fire going. Yeah. And I suppose, really, I mean, uh, this is be, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quintessential Irish pub experience, isn't it? Or should I say Northern Irish pub experience? Ah, yes, yes, it is. And uh, look, you know, my great grandfather bought the property in 1903 at public auction. It's been handed down through the generations. You know, people come from far and wide, you know, to sample their hospitality. You're going to show me some of the hospitality now, and we're going to go and we're going to. Am I going to try some of the soup? Am I? Yeah, yeah. We're going to get you some famine soup as well there. Yes, definitely. Out through the wee window there. People also stay here overnight. We have a wee small motorhome park at the rear of the property. We opened up that last year, and uh, so they're coming from far and wide. Wonderful. Well, Pleasure to meet you, Dermot. Cheers. Slancho. Slancho, here's the frills. My next stop was at Brona's home in the outskirts of Balachi, the home of another giant of Northern Ireland, Seamus Heaney. At Brona's Bakehouse, you can take part in a variety of seasonal baking and cookery classes and workshops. I caught up with Brona in our fabulous kitchen, just in time to put the finishing touches on our cake before we enjoyed an afternoon tea in the unique Gypsy Caravan. Brona, thanks a million for a really enjoyable day and not a soggy bottom in sight. Definitely not. <laughs> So I'm glad you enjoyed it and thank you for visiting. Brona offers experiences all year round and I hear her foraging classes and slow gin workshops are also very popular. From Brona's Bakehouse I headed to the island town of Enniskillen. Blakes of the Hollow is renowned for its traditional heritage and is one of the most famous and well recognised Victorian pubs in Northern Ireland. This is a real institution, as you were saying, Blakes of the Hollow. Now, I had a gorgeous um, meal here last night. And again, I mean, I'm, without labouring the point, value for money, the quality of the food. And the and Stroke for Mana is a destination, is a food and drink destination now. And the diversity of the offering is exceptional. And it's all on the island of Enniskillen, the only island town in Ireland. So it's quite unique and special. And you've loads of different offerings around, again, in terms of accommodation, which is important, I guess. For accommodation to come and stay, but when you come into the town and spend money on food, and drink too. People are giving the feedback that it's exceptionally high standard. People are putting a lot of effort into the offering, but it's good value for money as well. What's the thing about the black pig? There's a famous black pig or something, isn't there? Well, there's black pigs. Um, <laughs> I would argue these famous butchers and famous in their right for their black bacon. Now, the pigs themselves are multicoloured, but from a brand point of view, it's Fermanagh's famous black bacon, and they actually have their own island. 
And the joke around the town is, if you're from Enniskillen and you turn the age of 18, everybody gets in Ireland, but no, that's not the case. No, Ireland, I suppose, is famous for pubs in Northern Ireland. This is probably one of the most iconic, isn't it? And what makes it really special, I suppose, is the Blake family has owned it for over a century. You, you can't beat it when you come up, the friendliness of the people here, and it's all genuine, which is wonderful. Yeah, I love that. And it's that nice touch when you walk into summer and someone in the business recognises from the previous time you've been there, and it leaves a very, very warm welcome as well. Oh, that was great, Mark. I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, no. that's Thanks a great, for, that's a great for calling spot. In. Oh, it is. <laughs> really, many, many really tonight is lost in the hollow there now of a, yeah. a nice winter's evening. It's a great name for a pub. I love it. And there's loads of festivals, of course, here as well, isn't there? Um, so you have the Samuel Beckett Festival running, um, you have the Oscar Wilde Festival running. In fact, the Samuel Beckett Festival just celebrated its 10th um, anniversary there last month. And our local actor, Adrian Dunbar, came just behind us here. And more famous, I suppose, he's been for Line of Duty TV show, um, where he yeah. was Ted Hastings as well. But the back of Charlie's bar here has a lovely mural in homage of him and his paraphrases. Now we're sucking diesel. <laughs> that means we're now we're going Brilliant. somewhere. So this is the butter market here, Mark. It, it is indeed, Ed. Um, and it's brilliant that I have this involved in the taste experience as well. It's a step back in time, but also it's a step off the main street. It, it's beautiful, really. Um, we have a family-run business, um, owned and run by the Brady family. Um, Sharon's daughter, Bridget, mum, still hanging out and keeping an eye on things as well. And it's a real epicenter of local producers and suppliers, and it's a real nice step back in time. Oh, it's lovely the way you can hire boats here, Mark, and you can go along on the lake. It's gorgeous, and Loch Iron. And there's loads of activities now that's happened around Enniskillen that hadn't happened before. Great. Listen, Mark, I've had a fabulous day, right? So this is where Hugh the Hospitable had his castle. Indeed. Hugh the Hospitable Maguire reigned here from 1400s onwards. And as I said, it's a lovely starting point for my guests to come and visit Enniskillen for the first time, stretch the legs after maybe a journey, or if they're locals, just embrace the natural beauty of the Loch Erin Shore. Yeah. I mean, it's embracing kind of a giant taste to the whole area here. Everything that's included, it was great. Enniskillen has something for everyone, and I really enjoyed my time there. Now it was on to Belfast for another giant taste experience. It's so great to be back in St George's Market, of course, yep. which is a food lover's paradise here in Belfast. The perfect place to come if you love food. I mean, you've seen a massive explosion, like a renaissance of food here in Belfast. Yeah, I'm, I've really grown with it, so it's been wonderful to watch. From fish and chips to Michelin star, it's all here, isn't it? We have it all, and it's in such a little compact space as well in Belfast, so you can get to wherever you need to be really quickly. The value, as you said, is perfect. I just think it's spot on. The quality is excellent. And also we have that brilliant welcome. So no matter where you go, there's always someone to give you a wee bit of crack and tell you their stories. It's one of the last surviving Victorian markets that we have on the island. So it is just somewhere that I love to come into and feel like I'm almost going on a holiday. So yes, you're right. I can get everything that I want from my Spanish holidays, to Italian holidays, French holidays, and then just so much else that's from here in this place. And I mean, you've got jewelry and you've We've got so artisan yeah. craft here. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a part of it and as well. It's wonderful to watch them work away. Yeah. For me, of course, I've been looking forward all week to a Belfast bath. You know, we have our Ulster fry, but the Belfast wrap is probably the thing that's closest to my heart. <laughs> Great, Carlin. Okay, so listen, Come let's on, have let's a go. stroll around. Brilliant, let's go. We're going to head this direction now to go and get our Belfast bap. So. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant, Carlin. <laughs> this looks amazing, John. Thanks for Doesn't that. Doesn't it, though? Fantastic. Great I, stuff. I, it's a bit ridiculous. So you've got... So how do you eat this? Glens of Antrim, <laughs> free range eggs and you've got your um, your local breads and you've okay, got, yeah, so, it's good to wow, see that. Wow. Come on now, one bite. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. It's the perfect crunchy bath on top. Oh my God, wow. Well guys, I've just had two hours eating and drinking my way through the St. George's Market here. What a fabulous way to spend a few hours. And remember, you can't leave here without a Belfast bap. It'll probably take me another two hours to eat this. I had managed to get a reservation for lunch upstairs in stock with local legend, Chef Danny Miller. I mean, you've been all over the world, Danny. You've, you, you started your career in Germany, London, from Michelin star, yeah. star, you've done everything. I've always wanted to come back to Belfast and I love it. I love the, I love the crack, I love the produce. And I always think it's good, like, to go out and see the world, fair enough, but I think it's always good to come back and give a bit back. So, you know, I think we're blessed here in the island to have such great produce. Um, 
We get our, all our seafood from Strangford Lock, our glass. We get our vegetables from just out the road, Cumber and Lisbane, and spuds are the same. So it's, look, I think we keep, keep the food simple. Don't worry too much about the Michelin. Let's keep true to what we do. Simple, great, honest food. And of course, we're here in George's Market, or St. George's Market, as I say, which is open all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it isn't it's a real, and you're open here, of course, like a normal restaurant. No, it's been, it's great. And I think within this, within this beautiful space, it's like, you know, we're, we're blessed, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, and I love the fact that it's, it's nice open plan. You can see what's going on. You see me knocking my pan in. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you going to cook for me today now? I got a beautiful, simple grilled whole Strangford lobster, a bit of veg from Cumber and some chips from some of the region spuds. Nice and simple. I think like all dishes, it's key is the ingredients. So as you can see, We have the finest the Northern Ireland has to offer. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, I hope you've got an appetite. What a plate of food, Danny. Amazing. You're not just a pretty face. Oh, stop that. <laughs> no, it's key to cooking. Great, simple ingredients. My God. Magnificent. Just 30 minutes from Belfast is the Orchard County and Cathedral City of Armagh. Local tour guide Donna Fox showed me around this wonderful city of cathedrals, observatories, museums, plus a great afternoon tea. Armagh may be Northern Ireland's smallest county, but what it lacks in size, it more than makes up for an interesting things to see. This, of course, is the Orchard County, the Cathedral County, and the home of Ireland's spiritual capital. Two magnificent cathedrals, both named after St. Patrick, dominate the skyline. Take a stroll to admire the Georgian architecture, the tree-lined mall, and interesting places like the Armagh Public Library, the Planetarium, and Palace Domain. Donna, I think you deserve a cup of tea after yes, that. I'm ready for a cup of tea, thank <laughs> that you. That was a great tour. It was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it, David. I loved the observatory and the museum. The gathering rooms where we are here now is a real popular place with locals, and it has a bit of a story, doesn't it? They employ young people with autism so they can come here, they can work here and socialise here and everybody in the local community is very supportive of it. And as you can see, I mean the Homebeck scones and the Trebex, absolutely delicious, plus they do an all day breakfast. Well I really loved my afternoon tea in the gathering rooms with Donna. Now it was time to check out one of the Orchard County's award winning Orchard Cider experiences at Long Meadow Cider with a cooking class making some traditional griddle bread. Well, Catherine, it's so lovely to be here in Long Meadow, of course, in Armagh, which is known as the Cider County in uh, Northern Ireland, I guess, and it, all over Ireland. It it's is, beautiful. Yeah. And it's lovely, of course, three generations here now. And you were telling me earlier, Catherine, these trees are over about 50 years old, is it? They're years, looking great. I know. Like they're... myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hope for both weather as well, Ed. Come here, the, the apple, an apple a day, right? An apple a day. There's not a, no shortage of them here. Oh. But yes, uh, so third generational business here. So as I say, it was Pat's father started off the farm 50 years ago. Pat, my husband, has, has obviously taken it over with our son, Peter. So very much a family run business. And then we have our four daughters as well who help us out quite regularly here in the farm mm. with different events and shows and tour experiences because we do offer quite a lot of experiences here in the farm and, as well. Yeah, and of course, what's wonderful now for people that want to come and experience this. Um, so it's an orchard cider tasting experience with a cooking demo of traditional griddle bread. And it's, the soda bread is literally made on an old style traditional griddle. Brilliant. It's my grandmother's griddle, uh, which is over 60 years of age. It's a cast iron griddle that would have been, um, years ago, the, the soda bread would have been made in, in the crook of the fire. Um, and this griddle was in the fire at one stage, making the, <laughs> making the soda bread. So our visitors get the chance not only to taste ciders and apple juice uh, and our apple cider vinegar, Ed, but also the opportunity to taste the fresh bread hot off the griddle and the butter is just melting off it. Okay, Delicious. I can't wait. And you can really say here, just like Granny would have made. <laughs> just like Granny would have made, very much so. It's, it's Granny's recipe on Granny's griddle. Oh, fantastic. Great stuff. So the Bramley apple that's on the tree behind you there, the, the main crop that we have here in the orchard, um, it's 60% of the Bramley apple. So I say you're, you're really getting that lovely, crisp, clean, fresh 
apple taste coming through uh, within the ciders and then we have the rhubarb and honey here as well ah, which is lovely. absolutely stunning mm -hmm. and you'll see that as a port the colour of it is absolutely amazing um, and this one is also very popular so I'll open these now for you uh, just let Great. you try them and see what you this, think this gorgeous sunny day has, I have a big thirst on me now <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the day for a wee cider, isn't it, yeah, Ed? walking around and this, this gorgeous this orchards, working up a thirst. Huh? A beautiful thirst quencher, this one here is. So gorgeous. Taste that one, Ed, mm. and see what you think. And I have a wee tipple here just myself. You can't drink in your own, Ed, she so can't. But that is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, you can really can't get... Can't you get the so apple? It's, it's the most appliest thing you'll yeah. ever drink. And it? as you can see, it's the colour of freshly pressed apple. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Golden, yeah. Golden, Gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll have to take a few bottles of that. Right? <laughs> you never get to see that. I know. Should they're know, bursting. They're, they're yeah. huge. And then we we'll have a complete selection oh, here too. See, ones, that's yeah. the goat and delicious saying that's in there. Ah, so it is. Very good. Yeah. So, Ed, here we go. The fruits of your labour. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's actually quite stunning. Wow. I am yeah. surprised. I definitely think you've done this before now. Yeah. Look. This looks like very good butter as well. Huh? Hand-rolled hand butter, yeah, <laughs> only the best here. So listen, people love this when they come up, I'd say, do they? Oh yeah, yeah, this is very, very popular now. So it is, um, and the, the love, you know, from start to finish, that they're really eating their whole way through the experience. Yeah. Uh, because there's so much that, that we do within it with, with the tastings of, of the apples, mm. with uh, the tasting of the ciders and the products, the juices, and then to come in here into the Bramley Barn, completely glass-fronted, Look at the view, you have um, absolutely gorgeous, Ed. So it is, it's a really beautiful experience. We are not too bad. Hey, I don't know, <laughs> well, what do I say? Ha have the taste now, mm. the, the, final, the final taste test here now, what do we see what this is like now? I'll be picking apples all day, <laughs> paying for them. Not bad no, now, no. Ed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks a million. I'm so and here's, glad you enjoyed it. Here's to the Orchard County. Cheers. Cheers. Well, here I am back in the Carlingford Lock Ferry, going from Green Castle to Green Ore. I've just had the most fantastic week up here in Northern Ireland on my fabulous food trail. What a week I've had. Beautiful weather, beautiful food, fantastic people. And I must say, value for money really stands out. So if you're looking for something really different to do, and if you haven't been up to Northern Ireland before, it's never been a better time to go.